Hello everyone, this is Victoria Vintage Jewelry Collecting. Um, so I've been uh, to a new a new uh, carpet sale in Scotland, um, near Glasgow, and yeah, I was quite happy with it. I bought all this wonderful, beautiful vintage jewelry that I want to show you today. So we'll start actually with something that I didn't buy, I just um, repaired it. So that's this um, brooch I showed maybe a month ago, something like that. So it had um, it, it was a mi there was a missing stone. So I, I ordered some Aurora Borealis rhinestones, and I didn't find the exact same color because, as you see, this one is sort of like green, blue, purple, and I found. Like it, it was called, I think, peacock blue or something like that. And it had a little, little, little bit of green when you look carefully. It has a little bit of green shine, but it's mainly blue, so you can see the difference between this and this, or, or this and this. Um, but it doesn't. Honestly, it's only because I know it. I think if you don't know about it, then you don't really notice it. So I'm uh, pretty happy with this repair. And then I've repaired this coral bracelet that I showed maybe two months ago. Also found in a cardboard sale. And there was three missing stones there. There was a missing pink stone like this one. And it's a very, very light pink, very, very light lavender pink that was very difficult to find because when you say light pink online to find rhinestones, it still gives you a very bright pink, even if it's very light. Well, this one is very pale. So the only th one I found was this kind of rhinestones. And they are, they're different, even like the shape, the facets are different. And also the color is more like peachy rather than lavender. But it's also very very pale so i also don't think it's really like you can see it but if you're not really paying attention you don't really see it i think and then so i the, these two are the new rhinestones you can see how different the difference between them and then uh, i replaced one of these fuchsia this brighter pink with this one there was a missing one so again they're both bright fuchsia pink but this one is just a bit more like purple a bit more magenta i guess uh, than these ones but again if you don't really look into it i don't think it's i don't think it jumps right back in so um i'm quite happy to finally restore this coral bracelet and then we'll start with with my new additions to my collections. So I think I'm gonna start with um, with this necklace. Put that to the sides. Um, and this is from a company that I've previously showed a bracelet. So the company is called Mikey. So I've shown I've showed a, a bracelet from Mikey company. It's called Mikey London, I think. Um, about three months ago, found again at a car boot sale, and it had the same sort of style, like uh, the chain and then multiple multiple charms, quite like chunky charms. Same sort of like boho style um, so this one has this uh, pendant I guess with the mother of pearl shell application some kind of like other stones flowers and also has this bright blue stone in the middle that to me it looks a bit like turquoise Potentially, it's blue inside. 
um, and then it has this nautical, this sea creature, seashell, um, beach vibe with the shell, with the again mother of pearl, with the other shell, with the blue stones, with the starfish, same on this side. These are the stones, a bit different color. So yeah, I, I like thematic jewelry. Either it's, you know, insects, flowers, or sea creatures, <laughs> beach life. Um, it's quite a chunky piece. Um, Mikey London is a company that was founded in 1989. So some of these pieces are already vintage. They still exist. And before Debenhams closed, I think they were selling in Debenhams. And um, now they have their jewelry in House of Fraser. Um, and they have the online shop as well. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and this one is might be modern or it might be like early 90s. So it might be vintage as well. Uh, but this one might be quite old. So this piece, I think, is the latest from the 60s. The latest. That might be earliest. And it's this uh, milk glass, white glass beads with two shapes, this spirally ones and the small ones. And what I like about them is that they have this gold paint in them as well. And I think they're Czech. I think they're Czech beads. Um, this thing, unfortunately, is a bit broken. So the metal, metal um, thing um, goes out, the wire. You can put it in, but it's a bit, you know, not very safe. Um, yeah, so quite like some milk glass. And then the other old piece is this one. So the seed beads necklace with multiple, multiple strands. Now one of the strands has come loose um, and I have to see which one is it and I have to see if I can release it without damaging the hole because some sometimes they are linked to each other so if you cut one everything can go loose so I'll have to be very careful with it because um, I'm not very good at restoring this kind of a beading I can I can glue a, a crystal but beading is um, a bit more complicated for me although I have done that in the past and I had more time and then that's the clasp and I like these details as well like how it looks so again might be quite old 50s 60s uh, again might be Czech Um, and then the next necklace bead. Ooh, let me disentangle it. Got tangled with another stuff I wanted to show you. Is this necklace? Three strands, hook, metal looks like it might be brass. I like the, um, you know, the detail on the hook. I like the beads. Yeah, they are knotted. Looks like might be the original string. Uh, and it has this opaline irregular beads. Uh, has these beige ones. And then it has these green beads that imitate like green moss or something like that. Um, now this one I think might be English or Scottish jewelry because I've had um, oh, I have a, a, bro a brooch you know like miracle 
the miracle style brooch the, like the scottish celtic stuff um and it has opaline cabochons and like this agate imitating glass cabochons so it might be yeah it might be scottish never knew miracle did jewelry but uh did necklaces but maybe they did and i found one so um that's that quite happy with that it might be also quite old judging by the you know by the findings and then um just a small wee chain <laughs> uh, that might be modern or not very old but i like the hearts and it actually i bought it with a bracelet with the same chain bracelet but i've, I've lost it somehow um with these enameled hearts um quite a sweet jewelry something <laughs> probably we can find something like that at clears um and you can wear it on valentine's day um so i think that's that with the necklaces um i i bought one pair of earrings ignore these ones these ones are older and i think i showed them i bought them with that um that wonderful um butterfly necklace i think i showed you and yeah that's how it is so these are just some dangle earrings with diamante, you know, clear, rhinestones, crystals. Um, but they're quite sweet. They're very cute. They, they, they're wonderful on, on the ears. And I remembered that I have a necklace that I showed again not so long time ago that I bought from uh, the Carboot Seal in Silleth. And I thought that... Um, they make a good combination and maybe they are from a set uh, I don't know this one is the, the necklace is uh, Marks and Spencer it has a tag Marks and Spencer tag um, and to me as I was as I said in the in that video I showed it it looks like something from the movie Bridgerton so something that Daphne would wear and I, I will put I will put some photos if I can just to show you why why I keep talking about <laughs> Bridget and why it reminds me. Um, really makes me wanna like join a, a Regency era fashion festivals or fairs or recreations just to wear this. Um, yeah, um, they also look very bridal. You know, like you would see something, if you would buy it, you probably, you know, on, on a website, it probably the description would be like bridal wedding jewelry. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, then I found some bracelets. Oh no, just one bracelet. Just one bracelet. Found a pendant. Yeah. So I found some pendants. One of these is this pendant that's you know just stocked with these small rhinestones that look like iris glass you know this clear glass that has colored stri stri stripes um, and they were making these rhinestones quite a lot in like the 50s 60s 70s up to probably 80s but I don't think they do a lot of them now they just fallen out of fashion um, and this one was actually a brooch one day. You can see that that where the mechanism was, but somebody either wasn't wearing or maybe it was broken, and they've made um, a pendant out of it. And then I bought this pendant with the red coral, um, like a branch of red coral, and it reminds me of the letter A. And it has the wire around it and the bale. 
silver tone but no no silver markings or anything and I've seen these online this red coral or Mediterranean coral pendants branches um, and sometimes I think you probably could see it somewhere in tourist areas like souvenirs in the shops to buy but I'm pretty happy with that I do like to find coral Um, hopefully the vintage ones because I don't want people to you know incentivize people to hunt for coral because I think it's bad for the environment um, and yeah and I found this bracelet this one is also quite vintage it might be 50s but it might be also the 30s uh, and I also think it might be Czech or more likely it's Austrian. Um, just the metalwork seems a bit more Austrian and the crystals I think are Austrian crystals. Um, and I like the box clasp with the sun um, engraving. And then I like these balls, metallic balls, finding... Um, not really filigree but and then at the back it has this stamped metal very ornate back too given that you're not really seeing it look how ornate it is with the flowers really cute bracelet um right so let's start with the brooches so talking about iris glass this is the second brooch with the iris glass. This time it's just one big crystal, one big rhinestone. See, it's clear, but it has colors inside. So sort of colored striped glass. And it has a bit of green and then the pink or red and then the blue. And the mesh. Uh, this sort of mesh metal bases were quite popular in the 60s. The mesh does have some staining, but I, probably it could be most of them are stained. This metal probably stains. It's not very durable. Um, you can do nothing about it. And then this small brooch. There's one stone missing. Has very like an art deco feel shape and even like the back is sort of it looks like um, in the 30s the 20s 30s for they, they were like rhodium plating um, the metal the base metal to make it to keep it more shiny for a longer time basically So that's that and then I found a small brooch with like a pin of a Scottish terrier I think not very good with dog breeds and what I liked about it because as you can see it doesn't look very old to me uh, but what I liked about it is that the crystals you know like on this one when you um, put all this crystal very close to each other um, to make it shiny. Well, these ones are square. The rhinestones are square shaped. So that's what I liked about it. It gives a different kind of vibe and shine, isn't it? Sort of straight, straight shine. Um, and then I found Oh, this brooch, and it's cloisonne, this in enamel metal work, um, hummingbird, and it's a very big brooch, probably hummingbirds are smaller than this brooch, and I thought this is crown, Fish and Crown, this English company that does a lot of cloisonne, but there are other companies in England that do cloisonne brooch, uh, jewelry, um, aside from Fish and Crown. I forgot their names and I think some of them are still 
working, um, including Fish and Crown. Um, or maybe they're closed, I don't know now. But um, also, you know, it can be Chinese. The, the back does not look like Fish and Crown. It's not their usual back. As this, like, um, butterflies, actually. So, yeah. I like to find some enamel cloys in the jewelry, always. Um, when I find it in charities now, they always overprice it. It's very rare that I find one that's like three pounds, even the smaller ones, at least in my area, I like to put five, seven for a small brooch, only because it's like cloys on there. <laughs> so um, I like to find them when they're cheap if I buy them. And I like to find, because they're so, I mean, they're usually like flowers, animals, this kind of style. But I'm always like, I like to try, I like to find something new that I didn't find before. Like a different kind of animal or a different kind of flower or a color that's more unusual. Um, yeah, so, like, for example, at one of the, at one, and I edit showed it, I found this one. And I seen the other ones with the flowers and the butterflies so if it was the usual one i wouldn't buy it but this one had a unicorn and that's why i bought it because it has the unicorn <laughs> so yeah i do like to find when they're a bit more you know different um and then i found this beautiful brooch now this is a beauty honestly it's amazing i like how it shines i feel like it, it you know has all the different colors like gold and green like it's green here and then it's purple and then blue all kind of shine and then the different sizes and the shapes look at this shape i don't know i think it's just beautiful i know they're not really like i wouldn't wear it because it's not my style not something i would personally wear but then maybe I didn't have the occasion um, I am going to the vintage festival in Leeds soon so who knows maybe I'll wear it there because I, I think it's really beautiful and this one's it's probably Austrian crystals that looks in the back And then this brooch, um, this one is also interesting, like the, the history, I guess. Um, it's just a metal enamel flower, pink, white, looks like um, a daffodil, I guess. Um, and then the green enamel for the stem and the um, leaf. And sometimes they come without the stem, just with the flower head. Um, and usually when I see this kind of, like, um, these. So when I see this kind of shape of this pin in the back, it's usually 60s. Um, and it makes sense because this enamel, colorful, um, sort of like childish, almost like childish jewelry comes from the 60s. There was an era when flower jewelry was very uh, popular so it makes sense that it, it is from the 60s and it has this kind of backing um, yeah flowers were a thing in the 60s because the even the fashion was quite childish isn't it with these short straight dresses that were in, in you know in, in fashion then um, and the materials you know the fabrics were all bright colored and hmm, that's what I was saying falling it already fell I don't know how can I repair it to be honest it keeps falling um, yeah um, and I think they had some of these floral or patterns were a bit abstract or a bit childish or simplistic and a bit trippy <laughs> which makes sense because it's the 60s and I think there is also like um, I, I watch um, fashion history web um, 
YouTube channel. I forgot the name of the lady who is um, presenting, but she had um, she has a very nice way of presenting fashion from the eras and how she um, overlaps this with history and you know events that were happening at the time. And she was talking about like yes, of course, sixties were all that the hippie movement and um, the the fashion, but also, you know, the Vietnam War and um, all the horrors of the time, uh, the pacifist movement, so the hippies. Um, so sort of this flower motif had a lot of meanings. Um, there was a lot of symbolism in this flower jewelry. Uh, but a lot of it was just just fashion, just women wanting to be more girly, I guess. Um, and then the last one is this brooch. Well, it's a um, uh, duet, dress, clip duet. I forgot what's the name, because there are two names of it. Uh, dress clip maids and dress clip duets, I think. So these are dress clips. You put them on your clothing. Put it on one side if you want, on two sides if you want. You can just wear one. I'll put some photos. Um, there's a small stone missing here. And sometimes some companies would, um, and I think, was it Coro or Trifaria were, who introduced this system when you have the frame and then the dress clips will be worn as a brooch or as dress clips. I would put it in here. Uh, I hope I'm doing that right. Yep. Yeah. And you'd put it in here. And click. And there you go, you have a brooch. Um, I think it was in the 30s when they started doing them, but dress clips were fashionable in the 20s, but especially probably the 30s and then a bit in the 40s. I didn't see much of photos from the 50s with dress clips. Um, but this one is a company called Nymph. Or that's what it's signed. It's signed Nymph. And I didn't find anything about it because when I've tried to Google it, it showed me all kind of nymph jewelry, like actual nymphs. Or like styles. It's to do with fairy tales and mythology and nymphs. So I, uh, it was difficult to research. So I like I like to find dress clips, always buy them when I can. Uh, and if they're duet like this, then yeah, definitely. I wasn't expensive, I think I paid two pounds for it, so I'm very happy with that. Very happy with that. So that's it for today. Uh, hope you to see in the next video. Please like and subscribe and bye bye.